you like this video, make sure to visit our Vimeo page and follow us to get the latest update. Uh, see, actually, uh, in such scenario, uh, see, for example, uh, we uh, received the goods uh, from the vendor through inbound mm -hmm. delivery. Mm -hmm. See, for example, uh, that inbound delivery quantity is uh, 100. In that 100 quantity, we take it uh, uh, sampling uh, purpose for five quantity. Mm -hmm. The, uh, see, uh, based on the, our explanation, uh, we will uh, do 95 for unrestricted and 5 for move, move to uh, whether it in EWM level it is in a uh, block stock or how it is, how it is a process for sampling. We were sampling that much quantity should show under inspection. Okay. So no, actually, we have a sampling moment type, right? 50 moment type, right? See, such. Uh, how uh, well. what is sampling moment type? QA what sampling QA sampling on moment type is there, right? For consuming of samples. Yeah. Yeah, so first of all, you know, you need to identify that stock. Okay. okay. Uh, so when you do an inspection, five pieces you have to your, your sampling procedure has to be developed, uh, has to be configured. So five mm -hmm. pieces will be sh shown as a sample. And that five okay. pieces, you will have to, you know, you will see an inspection lot against those five pieces. Okay. Okay. So then you give your UD. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So the five pieces, which is in sample, which is, which you want to, um, which, which you want to, uh, uh, you know, consume it, the sample, the five piece. Let's say you accept 95 goes to the warehouse bin. That yes. five piece, you can move it to a, you know, um, you can create a separate follow-up action and move it to a separate area from where, separate, uh, you know, interim area from where you can go and do a goods issue. Okay. okay. Uh, a goods, goods issue to respective uh, location, how it is outside. Cost center, right? You will do a good cost center. Cost center. Ah, cost center. Directly, directly get in the cost. Got it. Got it. You can do a DJ. You can do a good issue to a cost center. Yeah. Oh. So, so you are when you uh, when, when you share your screen, we can quickly have a look to the uh, inspection rule, please. Quality quality rule. <clears throat> You can one more question here. Uh, see, actually, uh, see when we perform these quality related activities. Okay, for example, uh, in this case, uh, five is a sampling and uh, remaining 95 is uh, uh, remaining uh, is available stock in uh, EWM level. This actually, uh, we need to uh, take the label uh, for a separate uh, uh, the 95 quantity and five quantity, right? By sampling, we need to create separate labeling, right? Mm -hmm. How it's all configured in the system in EWM? We haven't discussed labeling yet, right? So we oh, okay. have a separate session for PPF where we'll understand how labeling works. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to park all questions here to quality now. If you don't mind, I let us start with outbound and okay. we'll cover the remaining questions at the end. Yeah. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, okay. Because you know, once we start calling uh, and outburn, we have to you know at least complete one uh, one cycle. So and it's going to be a first outburn today, so it will take a while. So let us complete quickly complete what is planned for today. Hmm. Okay, I got my screen. I hope you all can see my screen. No, not yet. No, no again. No, not yet. You are okay. Now we can. Okay, okay. All right. So, so now, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one for our first outbound. We created an outbound delivery for vendor return. We didn't process it. And in our warehouse, we have never executed, you know, any outbound stuff. So, what I'm going to do here is first create a sale order. So, Outbound, there are several outbounds, right? We do outbound for STO, sale order, outbound for cost center, outbound for scrapping. We do all kinds of outbounds, right? 
so the most common one is through uh, through sale orders right a customer needs a material we create a sale order and then for that sale order we we pick the material and goods issue okay so while we are creating this document we'll understand the process related to uh, sales okay and what how sales integrates with us okay so mm, let me confirm my sale area sales area first so first i'm going to create a sale order and then i'm going to create outbound delivery for that sale order okay and we are going to And Yogan, this, to, this order, uh, this is outbound delivery without order open, also the scenario will be there, right? Yes, For yes, our in, yes. internal movements. Okay. Yeah, and we can have delivery without uh, sale order. VL, VL01. And just a VL, VL, VL0 VL0 VLNO. Yeah, VLNO. Yeah, yeah. You, you can have that as well. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, let me see. There was a customer 2152. It's there. No. So uh, let me extend the customer to our uh, sales area first, yeah? So let me take this customer. This is standard SAP, you know, uh, test customer in the, in the system. I'm going to extend it to my sales area before I start using it. So um, the rules are, FLCU00 to extend it to the company code. I think it should be extended to company code because we are using an existing company code. Let me quickly validate. Yes, it's extended 1000. And let's go and check the sales area assignment here. So I'm pretty sure it is not assigned since we have not created a new sales area is 034, 10, 0, 0. save it. Nothing is mandatory, so I'll simply save it. Okay. I think I would need mm, pricing determination procedure. Let me put it zero one and then see how it works. If we don't get pricing, then we'll have to do a config. In the shipping as well, so some condition. No, not for now. You know, we we can we get work with you know our existing entries. So in the seventeen zero zero one. Customer reference, let me enter customer PO number something. Yeah. Payment terms. You can, uh, one question here. Uh, see, when we uh, perform this uh, outbound delivery, the sales order against outbound delivery, that pre request is uh, any pre request uh, for uh, forwarding agent uh, integrate with the uh, Transportation model. Okay. So, so for now, let us you know assume that we are not using transportation management. Okay. But yeah, you will need a forwarding agent, not for for our purpose, for warehousing purpose. We need it from shipping purpose, from transportation yeah. purpose. Shipping purpose we need, right? Yeah. Yeah. So in outbound delivery, it is updated, right? In the shipment, it is updated. Okay. okay. If you're using transportation, other shipment or a freight order. Yeah. So plant is uh, PL34. Amount is, let's say, 100. Okay. Everything looks okay. Let me save and see if, yeah, something incomplete. I think payment terms could be incomplete. Inco terms, payment terms, shipping point is not coming up. Let's see why. Yeah. 
Shipping point is not coming up. We'll see. Uh, Yogan, actually, we need to check the shipping point determination. Actually, we create new shipping point, right? And the, the, whether the shipping point assigned with loading group and transportation group. Yeah, we'll check that. But we have already maintained that config. Just give me a minute. The shipping point is SH34. Load, that is a problem. Loading group actually is not mentioned there. Let's go to shipping and deliveries. I think shipping point determination. It's in base in basic shipping functions. Shipping point determination. Assign shipping points. Okay. So we did maintain for all the possible combination. Let us maintain with the combination PL34 without loading group. So Oops. Loading group is not there. Yeah. We did change this. I don't know why it is still showing a 1710. SS34. Who to change all this to SS34? And loading group also let me, you know, it should have taken the first one without uh, any entry. Let me maintain and try this. Let me save some time. Let me do this now. VA01. Customer is fine. PO number, I put some PO number. PO down, it's not taking here. Point T, I'll say one pallet. They need one pallet. Pricing error. So I've entered the plant now. Now I need to enter the price as well. There's a mod field here. I'll just put the amount here. Now if you can save it, add it. Should come up with shipping point. Yeah, shipping point is now coming up. Yeah. yeah. Terms X works. Straight determine. Okay. So now just the payment term and we can save an order. And here we go. Morgan, this product is not batch managed, right? No. Yeah, there is no batch. Okay. 378 is our sale order. Uh -huh. 
Now I'm going to create a delivery, an outbound delivery. So, so in this outbound delivery, we have a warehouse. Okay. Okay. So store location is not coming up. There is another config in logic execution to determine store location. We will do that in a while. But yeah, you can see here now, a warehouse is coming up. A state is applying because these are going to be maintained now in EWM level. So I'm going to save this delivery. This will be your first outbound delivery and it should then replicate to EWM. Did you, you did not enter any pick quantity? Pick quantity? No, we, we, we just maintain the delivery quantity. Okay. Picking quantity will be updated from EWM. Okay. okay. So here we go. This will be our first outbound delivery. Yeah. Okay. So now this looks very much similar to inbound delivery. You have product, you have quantity, you have owner, stock type 41, unrestricted and 4000, process type. Okay. So now it doesn't have a staging bin. You remember same issue we were facing in, in the... Um, uh, the inbound as well, the process type was 2110 something and you know the bins are not coming, we created our own process type. So same thing we'll do here today, we'll create our own process type copying standard and we'll assign a GI bin here, GI zone bin. Okay, So you want the products when they are picked, they should be taken to a GI zone bin and they should be good issued from there. Okay, so now um, let us create a new process type okay that gives us flexibility we can do our own configuration at a process type level but uh, johan when you're saying gi bin is there but there should be some subsequent internal documents within wm to bring the product from wherever bin to the gi bin zone mm -hmm. right so right. would that come as a part of when you do a task when you create exactly, a task yeah. in our office. So the picking will be done like we do put away. Mm -hmm. uh, put away is um, a task, right? We create a mm -hmm. confirm a task. Mm -hmm. Same way now picking will be a task. So okay. it will take the stock from, as you mentioned correctly, take, take stock from the warehouse bin to the staging area. Mm -hmm. It's a movement, a task has to be created and we will create a task and confirm the task. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, even I noticed that uh, that packing specification is not available in this outbound delivery. But uh, once this packing specification uh, identify once uh, create a task, right? Packing specification has nothing to do with task creation. But in, in outbound delivery, this uh, pack pack spec is not mandatory for outbound delivery. Why we need pack spec? I mean, I mean, what purpose you feel we should need pack spec? Pack spec? No, you put as a loose product. Okay, then why why you need to pack it in the delivery? So in outbound, we don't pack it in the delivery. We pack it while picking. So loose product, you create a pallet, you pick it onto a pallet. We don't oh. auto pack it here. See? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Inbound, we do auto pack, but why outbound, why, you have not even picked it. What are you going to pack? In inbound, we do the GR, we have stock. Here, the stock itself is not there. We need to pick the stock first, then only we'll be able to do the packing. Okay, okay. Okay. So I was about to create a bin, GI zone bin. Okay. So this GI zone bin is similar to a GR zone. Yeah. Inbound, we created GR. Now, outbound, let me create a GI zone. And we know now whenever we create a bin, we have to sort it. Just sorting the entire warehouse just in case you have missed anything. 
Oh, before creating uh, bin master, sharding is uh, mandatory. Am I right, uh, Yogan? After bin cre creation, bin sorting is important. Okay. Okay. Now, question to you: uh, Find out an answer. What bin sorting does? Tell me tomorrow. Okay. What is the relevance of bin sorting? What are the okay. benefits of bin sorting? Since you have asked me that question, I, I was not expecting that question. We yeah. have discussed in master data. Go through it and tell me. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so now here this delivery. I I don't want this delivery. Okay, so um because I want my own process type. Okay, or else let me see if I can change the process type here. Yeah. So okay. bin sorting it 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 does the activity area assignment right? When you do the sort, yeah, yeah. But there are many things more. Yeah. So you guys can re revisit the bin sorting, or yeah. just read it from Google Help. You know, you will recollect what we discussed. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's the easier way. Just than going through over an hour, one and a half hour recording. Yeah. Okay. So now it's giving me some error. Um. Good. So, Parasol does not allow for outbound delivery or UTB. Oh, I'm so sorry. We did a process type creation, but we haven't determined it. That's the problem. So, we did. We have to determine as well. So, here, if we say warehouse as WH34, okay. Outbound document type. What is the document type here? Standard document type of inbound design be outbound. It is OUTB. Okay. So now it says OUTB Y two one four. I'm going to replace that with two zero one zero. Okay. So now let me see if I'm able to change. If I'm not able to change, I'll delete and recreate a new one. But I don't want to pick Y two one four. Did you save the config so that? That's yeah, I did save. Okay, is there some other configuration? It's saying it's not allowed for, or maybe let us you know, delete it and create a new one. So, in the same stretch, when you're saying deleting it, you have to do a quantity zero, right? Yes. Because you cannot actually delete, delete anything here. Okay. Yeah. So now SAP has provided as an option in the latest version. You can, if your warehousing has not started, you can change the quantity in ERP directly, or delete the delivery in ERP itself. I think you can't delete. You can change the quantity to zero in ERP itself. So if you see here, rather than making it zero on the EWM side, I made it zero on the ERP side. Is there any kind of config uh, at the EWM level where you have to set it up so that you can change the outbound delivery? It's available in S4 HANA. I think 1809 version almost. Uh, until what stage? Till the time confirmed? Put away uh, outbound yeah. is confirmed? Till, or? Till, no, no. Till the time you create a pick. Started. Till the time you know something yeah. has started for the delivery. Yeah. If something is not started, then you know you can do. Okay. You'll be able to do it. Okay. If any step is started, then you cannot. Yeah. Then you have to do it in the WM. Okay. It is eight eighty two. Let me see here. Okay, now two zero one zero has come up. And GA Zoom bin is also coming up. So this is what we wanted. So now we will pick the stock. Okay, so we want the stock to be picked from eight zero four zero. So in here we did not click the good issue button, but in outbound, okay. inbound mm -hmm. we click good. It's yes. outbound. Yeah. So okay. now let okay. us understand the difference here. So in our inbound, we first take the stock in the GR area. So for taking, and then we take it into a bin. Okay. Outbound, it is opposite. You know, we first take the stock from bin. So first it will be warehouse movement from 
bin to the GI area and then we will post goods issue. So goods receipt and goods issue, they are always posted yeah. in the staging area. So when you pick the physically also, you pick a part take to staging area. Now the truck is going to come, you're going to load the truck and then it goes away. Right? So goods issue will always come later after you're picking. The first step will be picking. Makes sense. Thank you. Yes, makes sense. Yeah. So see, uh, no warehouse is like, I'm going to create a picking task manually, but no warehouse is going to create a picking task manually. Picking is going to be automated. And if you're using... Um, you know, uh, uh, I think a medium scale or a large scale warehouse picking task will be always created using wave wave is a very, you know, good feature in, you know, planning your goods issues. We'll discuss that tomorrow, but now, uh, you know, we will create it manually going forward. You know, our waves are going to create the task. That is our final solution. Okay. So, uh, so let's focus on, you know, the strategies also while we are creating the task. So now we know, you know, when we in put away, we have learned there is a storage type determination. There is a storage section, bin type and bin determination. But when it comes to outbound, there is storage type determination and there is storage bin determination. There is no, you know, the optional things are not there. Okay, like we had in inbound. Those optionals are not there. Okay. So what we are going to do today here is we are going to do the storage type config. Yeah. Let me maintain the determination unit five. I'm going to do the storage type determination. It's the same like inbound. So we don't have these two. The system determines what is the storage type and then that storage type, what is the best bin? Okay. So we are going to study our own strategies later today or, or you know tomorrow. But you know this strategy is going to help me find out the right bin. But before that, it should help me. System should help me to find out the right storage type. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to configure stock removal indicator and make sure you know this part gets picked from eight zero zero four. So like we have put away control indicator, you know, like if you see here in our product master, we created a put away control indicator. So based on that put away control indicator, the stock always goes to 8004. Yesterday we saw that you know, it automatically when I created a task manual automatically went into 8004. Now I want to create a stock removal indicator f i n p so when we are removing, removing the stock it should remove the stock from 8004 and if there, there is no stock in 8004 it should pick it from 8006 okay so this this config is very much similar to inbound so just in case of uh, uh, outbound instead of creating a putaway control indicator We'll create a stock removal indicator. Okay, warehouse WH34. Stock removal indicator is FINP. Finish good speaking, yeah. Finish good speaking. Just give me a minute. This mobile is vibrating. Just a minute. We did, we did this indicator creation. Now, we need to tell the system when, what is the sequence? But you already assigned this indicator without before creating it into the material master? No, I, I didn't present it. Ah, I didn't present it. Now it will come up. Okay. Now I'm going to save it. <laughs> okay. So I've just saved my master data. Okay, I'm coming here. So now here, you know, we create a search sequence. Okay. 
So in which sequence we want system to search? So the warehouse is WH34. We say the sequence, I generally give the same sequence as the removal indicator, okay? So it's easy to understand, you know, one to one. Finish good speaking. And I'll say here, first search. So in inbound, it was first put away here. If you don't find a relevant area, go to the next storage type. But here it's the other way. First put away in first pick from, try to pick from 8004. If you don't find enough stock, pick from 8006. These are the sequence. Okay. Can you open the Excel, our layout, please? On the Excel, you know, the layout we have. Yeah. The layout, this area is 8004. Four. And, and this okay. area is 8006. Okay, bulk and apparent. Okay, okay, that's everything. Thank you. So, so, then, I have one question here. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no problem. Uh, this uh, in uh, storage type search. Uh, uh, determination hmm. in wm we have a storage type indicator but this uh, uh, that has been eliminated right here so stock removal indicator this okay. is stock this is called a stock removal indicator here okay in wm actually we have the storage type indicator right that is equivalent to this right yeah we have storage type indicator equivalent yes that's correct yeah. okay. i don't and know the exact thing. name we call it but yeah yeah, I know. That, we, that it's is, a three I character. It's sure. a three character. Really, yeah. Okay. That is storage type indicator. Actually. In the first step is define storage type indicator when in going WM. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, Yogan, in uh, search sequence, actually, we have a lot of uh, uh, control parameters uh, in WM, like uh, uh, class, special class, special, uh, this, uh, special stock indicator, stock category, then all how is controlled in EWM? That's what we are going to do now. So oh, okay. So we created the sequence and now we are coming here and assigning the sequence. So what are the parameters based on which the system determines the sequence? We here here we are saying you know, the parameter is stock removal indicator, which is FINP. So if the product is FINP. Process type is 2010. We are saying this, follow the sequence FINP. This is our, our requirement, but there are some more parameters like quantity classification. Mm -hmm. So in inbound, we discussed about quantity classification based on the size of the palette. So there is a strategy which we'll discuss, you know, if the quantity is small, you pick from a, a different area. If the quantity is large, you pick from a different area. So based on the packing, you want to pick on so the quantity that has been packed. You want to differentiate the a, the search sequence. Okay. Then, you if you are if you're using sale order stock, project stock, or if you're using the stock type, different types of stock type, quality block, you want a different sequence for them, or you are using a consignment or an RTP stock, you want a different sequence ah, in these yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Next is hazard, hazardous, right? Hazardous. Things, yeah. okay. okay. I will mean would, this is this stock this, removal rule. Would this okay. setting, and uh, Johan, would this setting supersede the setting you have done previously? Because you've done the sequence 8004 and 8006. If this is the indicator, use 8004 and then 8006. But in this one, you have further expanded that strategy would it supersede no no it will not supersede this config is going to lead me to that config see if the okay. product is this mm -hmm. the indicator is this my mm -hmm. sequence is this so i created this sequence in this sequence i told okay. look first into 8004 and then in okay. 8006 so basically i'm determining my sequence okay okay so this is a sequence value. okay yeah okay so so now when I'm going to create my task, you will see in the log all these determination. Okay, so let's go back and try again.
okay now it's green it is taking stock from o1501 and here you can see it is determining the sequence okay so sequence so um yeah so it is going to find first stock using search sequence finp then it first searched into 8004 it found a bin in 8004 and then it kept where, where, where did we assign fifo no that is uh, there is a fee stock removal stock rule, removal yeah. rule. Yeah. yeah what is the stock removal rule it is very very um good uh, you know it does a lot of controls you know it's very good field you know it helps us to design strategies the way we want in the standard we have fifo but yeah we will we'll discuss what is the rule is yeah when we go into the strategies but for now let's say we we are going as per fifo the standard one for now so what that rule does we'll discuss in this topic when we go to bin de bin determination strategies okay then uh, if we see this high level uh, difference between wm and ewm is there any difference in uh, search sequence no right any uh, uh, control parameters added in ewm other mm, than no no WM? they had seen just quantity classification is new you don't see ah, that yes yes WM. yes yes quantity classification new and i don't think anything else you did that stock type also there okay and, but the uh, stock, instead of the stock type indicator they name it as uh, stock, stock uh, removal indicator srci removal. and okay. warehouse process type instead of movement type oh process type instead of movement type mm, that is very important point <laughs> okay fine okay so now uh yesterday you know uh, it was yesterday or day before yesterday we we spoke about bulk it was day before yesterday now uh, we said you know when we start removing the stock the bin will be blocked auto block and we said we will we'll see that when we do the outbound picking yeah so let's see you know, if it is blocking the bin And we said we want that config. So this is the first bin. Let us see if it is blocking. So as of now, let me first create my picking task. So this is our first picking task in our warehouse. Okay. So I'll just go here and click on confirm. I want to see my order number. Order number is this. Every task has an order number. There is no queue here. We need to see why there are no queue. Stock is being picked from 8004 to GI area. And uh, we need to do the queue config before we confirm. And the uh, activity area is 8004. And if you see here, refresh, the bin is not yet blocked. Okay. Because we have not yet picked it. Okay. So just a quick uh, recap. We go to activity area uh the queue config and let us quickly check why the queue did not come because if you remember for rf at the moment you know we may or may not do it on rf but whenever we do our outbound process on rf we need the queue to come up right if the queue doesn't come you know we don't know which uh, you know which uh, which user is going to pick it you know we, we spoke about resource group and we know oh, now what is the role of queue what is it does is it purely for rf if i'm doing it from it's, desktop i don't need you don't need it from desktop it's purely on rf purely on us so it's okay the work so it goes so in. work allocation mm -hmm. happens through the queue happens to the queue and the work. Okay. so i will select that i'm working into an outbound area so i'll go into that queue and all task of outbound will be proposed to me right. so now in mobile data entry we did this config yeah we came to no oh, no it was not in mobile data entry it was in cross process settings resource management we, we go to queues now let us see why the queue is not coming up from a for a warehouse wh34 i think we might have only created inbound queues okay outbound queue you can see the activity area is 801 a b and c Okay, so but this bin is into 
What is this bin? Which activity area it is assigned to? Let us see. Zero four, I think. Oh, sorry. This is eight zero zero four. There is no entry yeah. for eight zero zero four. Yeah, I'm sorry. Eight zero zero one picking. We have activity area. So I need to create a queue first. Let me see if there is a general outbound queue. From eight zero zero four, no. Let me create a queue for eight zero zero four. Mm, good. Select this. Copy this. Yogan, uh, when we pick the product, when we pick the product from the bin, uh, queue is not mandatory. See, see if uh, scanning a queue is mandatory, it is a manual picking, and uh, do it in desktop. Uh, queue is not mandatory. Am I right? Yes, that's correct. And yeah, now yeah. you know. Now you guys can also you know try working on these questions you know these questions you know when i say yes you agree on it but you also try it you know now you know mm -hmm. how the picking works just just try doing that you know on okay, the monitor okay, okay. or on the desktop it will allow okay so okay do do test these you know queries of yours as well you know yeah I, i'll let you know but also test them okay so here i've just created a config so our next task let's say we do another picking on rf or this one on RF, we'll have a queue determined. Okay, so basically, you know, there are desktop way of confirming the tasks. I I'll just say I'll just say confirm plus save. It will be done. Okay, but I want so, to so here. So here, one thing, Ron. Now the queue you have maintained the queue. We cannot read the config again in this without deleting no. the task. No, we can't delete. We'll have to cancel and recreate. We'll cancel and recreate. So my aim is, you know, to execute this task on RF. Okay, because pickers, they all EWM, they all always use RF. Okay, that's going to be our main process. So let me cancel the task, create it again. I could have manually assigned the queue here. But let's, you know, also test whether our config is working or not. You know, we are going to do a lot of outputs. And Johan, I've heard quite a few times, not seen, but I've heard a lot mm -hmm. of few times, if things get stuck in queue, it gets stuck. Oh, no, 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 that is different queue. That is a different queue. The, the queue, uh, that's a queue between EWM and ERP. This is a queue for RF execution. Ah, okay. That phase is for that. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that is for basis, basis related. Uh, SMQ2. Okay. That is SMQ2. Yeah. SMQ2, yeah. Ah. Okay, but but this SMQ2 is very important, right? Uh, like yes. in the BAU world, this is uh, very SMQ2 and SLG1. Very, very important. Yeah, it'll it'll, it'll take most of your time, you know, when while yeah. monitoring and sorting issues related to your queues. You need to be so a to... very good expert in IM because to understand those errors. Plus, I think a lot, lot of errors can come, you know, you, you need to be. Yeah. Very careful. Oh, we'll have a quick session when we have session an session on that. Session. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, good. Uh, you know, just tips mm -hmm. how to work with yeah. the troubleshooting. Yes. yes. See, queue. Yeah. There is no, you know, steps. Plus, we don't need a separate session. While you are testing, you mm -hmm. you will come across these issues. Like I'll 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 tell you some tips. Mm -hmm. While you are working, you come across these errors. Okay. You did do a good issue. I'm sure you'll come across a lot of errors. Mm -hmm get issues like this now these errors are not new to you guys you know you have seen these errors in my go so this queue so what, what is queue basically you know when you do a my go you you get stung you get an error you know like a gl account does not exist or obyc error right gbb account determination invalid we don't get those errors in ewm ewm will process it and those errors will get here so Q is nothing but, you know, uh, the okay. MIGO errors, which you would have ideally got if it was IM. Now you're getting, because EWM is doing that posting in the background. So they get stuck in the background. Take this example. Shelf-life expiration date is not entered. Okay, so it's yeah. a shelf-life parts. It's not entered. So what you need to do here, correct the customization of some general ledger. It's a, You'll assign this to finance. Finance team will solve it. Okay, you generate a general some error related to that. 
there is no stock so add stock and then do the goods issue there is stock in ewm not in im so you have to solve the errors and just simply reactivate it that means you have to push the data back again so where you push the data from from here or from the here ewm itself. again here, here itself. It. just click here. and act activate it okay it push that's it re-execute one stage is some... So does there is any background job which try to push them again? Like mm, something, because if you there, pick something. There is a job, but um, but the job, you know, will create performance issue after some time, you know, because there okay. will be a lot of queues and uh, you need and to find a idle time, you know, to process them. So, so in real world, does business have access to this? No. In real world, you know, the business, they, they use Veros monitor. You can see the same yeah. queues in monitor. You can also activate. If you am not sure, you guys were made a note of it. We discussed in the queue at the bottom. Yeah, yes. yeah. You said message queues. Yeah, this is. I really like this because you know, see okay. when you go to SMQ two, the technical right users cannot understand that. Mm. Plus, sure. You know, they, it doesn't give you the detailed description. Here it will give you the description directly here itself. You don't have to drill down. And just you can re-execute it from here as well. Z yeah. process. Ah, ah, okay, okay, okay. So and, if you are not, you know, if and, you are you're new to EWM, learn this way. For, mm -hmm. for people mm -hmm. like me, we are more into than, SMQ2. Yeah, yeah. SMQ2. SMQ2, SMQ2, yeah. But this is right. more better and a refined way, you know. Yeah. Far better. You can only see there are multiple warehouses. Shift carry one mute list if you are. Run one sales flow on process or flow and likewise. Yeah, yeah. Just very this is a good handy one. Mm -hmm. And same thing for the IDOG. What is the IDOG? Then applica uh, application log is SLG one, right? And the what is the so, uh, no, uh, Kabir, this uh, IDOC, uh, there is no link with the SMQ at all. IDOC, uh, so is, if it is a third party yeah. system, and there is no Q involvement. So, what we Okay, let's come back to our bond, guys. Uh, now, we have our Q assigned to our order. Okay, now we need to execute this order. Okay, so now we'll pick it from the warehouse. Okay, into the uh, into the GI zone. So I'm going to log into my RF screen. Okay. Um, okay. The transaction is slash CWM RF UI. Just on the screen, what is the transfer uh, uh, work? Uh, what Where was order? Oh, yeah, in the screen, I want to see that, please. Uh, in the one second, screen. one second. Outbound picking. So we have different base to do a picking. We'll go by Q, okay? O U T A T zero four. So Q does not belong to resource group. So now, since our resource, this Q is new, our resource that we were using, you know, it's not assigned to a group. So one minute, let us quickly do that. R S R C. So resource is why well, the screen is not going. So my resource is a, which forklift I'm using. Yeah, using forklift three. Let me check my forklift which I'm using. Can check that using the order itself. So I'm using it's not yet entered into this. Yeah, you wanted to see something here. So, yeah, so where is the transfer? Uh, uh, where was the order, please? In this screen after where was the order on the top header. Let let me go back to my RF and see which resource I'm using. Mm -hmm. 
forklift three. Okay. Then the forklift three, the resource group is INBO, and in the resource group QSCQ, I'm going to say this resource is also going to work on the outbound side. I'm going to send the Q over here. OUT H zero four. Okay, let me do that. Right. So now let's see. While doing this queue setting, you have assigned the forklift. So this resource is working with the forklift only. Is that what we're saying in this setting? Yeah. So that forklift is allowed to work in this queue. Okay. These orders. Okay. When you say allowed, it can go, you can use other equipment as well. Yes. And the yeah, only certain forklifts will be allowed, not all. So you can control which forklifts are allowed in which area. Okay. Okay. So here I'll say next. I don't want to pick it onto a pick handling unit. I'll go to the bin. Now you can see why I've taken you an RF to show you. See the source handling unit is blank. See, we are in a bulk area. So the bulk area, we don't know which handling unit is there, which handling unit is closest. So the user can pick any handling unit from that bin, whichever he, because system is not going to propose a handling unit because, you know, there are so many handling units, you know, maybe the oldest handling unit, if system would have proposed this, this might be in the corner, right? Oh, sorry, this one, six, eight, one, six might be at the corner. Let's say in a user, is he able to easily access 800221, this handling unit? He'll scan the handling unit that he sees. He's going to scan the product quantity that he's picking. Scan the HU again to confirm that he has taken it from the bin. Ron, why these uh, confirmation fields are so short? Why they don't give the full name? See, the, see, obviously limitation of space. The other thing is, um, you know, they, this is meant for scanning. Okay, so if you if they display complete, you know, there are chances that users may type in, you know. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. It, it's just a replica of what we have on the scanner. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same thing is there in the next to that field. So let us see, you know, whether our order is confirmed. Yes, it's confirmed now. Okay, we have done the picking. Let's see, you know, whether the bin is blocked. Yes, the bin is blocked for put away now. You can see put away block has been set. Okay, now we will not be able to add anything into that bin till you remove 23 pallets. Okay, so it will keep on determining this bin during picking because the oldest stock is in this bin. Till you remove everything, you know, it's going to uh, be blocked. Once you remove everything, the block will be removed on its own. Okay. Now let us also see where the stock is. It should be in GI zone. Yeah. We did create a lot of no, pins no. in the staging area. No, no, now going back to what Shiva asked earlier, I mm -hmm. would I have some special packing instruction which i would have generally right mm -hmm. so would it go to the different activity area first your your task would be configured in such a way that it move from there into mm -hmm. that particular activity packing area maybe. and then you have further task to pack it in that special instruction is, is that work yeah. that way see i really we don't use packaging specifications on bond because See, packaging specification outbound is will not do auto packing. It will propose a packaging material, but okay. you have to do the packing and confirm that you have done the packing. Okay, so so yes, if at all you know there is a special packing requirement from the customer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have taken the pallet from the source bin to the GI area. Now the customer wants a special packing there. Mm -hmm. You can do a manual packing. Or else you can take it to packing works and the system will propose you the packaging material, but you have to do the packing yourself. 
Mm-hmm. So there is no equivalent task in the system or in the RF to confirm yes. that. Yes. Yeah, there'll be a separate task. I mean, this is a basic outbound. There'll be a that's separate basic, task. We'll take it to an outbound a- packing area. We'll do the repacking. We'll do the mm-hmm. labeling. Mm-hmm. Then we'll bring to GI area. As of now, we are just doing the okay. outbound in just two mm-hmm. mandatory steps. Picking and goods issue are mandatory steps. But we can also add several intermediate optional steps. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So, so in that scenario, we have to make the packaging instruction as well, right? Okay, for what purpose you need packaging instruction? How it packaging will instruction we, so what will happen? See, what happens? Something, I, when I do my production, I'm making a production, production. non-pallet management material. No, no. Okay. Uh, I'm getting I the stock, stock into the warehouse. Yeah, yeah, getting a stock in a warehouse, okay, and which is not managed in pallet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, there is a requirement from a cust- one customer that he want to receive, up, receive the stock in a pallet. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what I do, I bring it to my uh, to my GI area. Okay. Now I have to do the I have to put it in a pallet in some sort of packing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So don't you in that case I need to know like the operator need to know for that particular customer how many how many pieces or how many units need to be packed in a pallet and what packaging material he need to use. See that's what I'm saying. So inbound you can do an automated packing. But outbound, you have to execute physically there, right? Somebody has I to get the it. work no, center no, to that, the packing. That is fine. That is fine. But what I'm saying, still we need a packaging instruction or not. Packaging instruction, yes, it. we need. We need that. But there are other ways to do that. Why I, mm-hmm. why I want to pick loose pieces? I, there are more efficient ways to do that. While picking itself, why I'm not taking the same pallet in, in which I want to pack it to my customer and putting into the same pallet? Why I have to separately do pick everything into a big box and then you know go and segregate them in this in the packing area it's not efficient we should look for a better efficient processes like while picking itself i take 10 boxes of the customer i put into the back box itself so during picking so itself, i'll, 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 I'll give you a, i'll give you one scenario okay so mm-hmm. we produce pallets okay now we produce uh, uh, for example of frozen ice cream okay we got the ice cream we produce mm-hmm. an individual product we have a pallet okay now from a customer, there is a requirement to give get a family pack, okay, mm-hmm. family pallet. So what they do, they bring uh, the pallet, they open the pallet, okay, and they create a new pallet. In the new pallet, they bring product A, five pieces of product A, five pieces of product B, and five pieces of product C, okay, and they make a new pallet with fifteen pieces. Mm-hmm. So, so is, within is... the outbound area. After the outbound delivery, so they have did, did the delivery. Within the delivery, there are three products. Okay, the three products have the quantity, but those uh, like five, five, five. But the real in real life, we make them a full pallet, full pallet like the fifty uh, pieces in one pallet. So what warehouse operator do? They bring those pallet to the uh, area where they open the pallet. Okay, bring the five quantity of each product and put it into the new pallet. So why can't they take the new pallet and pick 555 five, five from the bin itself where they are placed? But because the the pallet is already they when they receive a pallet in the warehouse, it's a full pallet of like. Correct. Uh, so if they are taking a full pallet to a staging the, area or yeah, a packing they, area. They're yeah. removing five. But Absolutely the, five. Yeah. So whichever place in the source bin or in the packing, they are removing and putting into the packing. So where we can pack spec this? See, sometimes the customer may ask eight eight eight. 555 five, five mm. is the quantity mm-hmm. fixed for your pallet. So the, yeah, the, the, the yeah, quantity, can, pallet. quantity can be quantity can be fixed, but of the different materials. No, so see, I can have see, it will become complicated. So now let's say customer asks, you know, only two ice cream, first two types, A and B, 10, 10. You can still put it on one pallet. Or you know, it becomes 12 and 10. You you have to create two pallets. So you cannot exactly create a pallet size to do automate your packing. I'm saying there are better ways so, to... Uh, I think question here is more than automation. Question here is that instruction. Which the operator instruction, must have. So what instruction is going to do? No, what, what, like what, I need what, to pack four in this pallet or eight in this pallet, ten so in this pallet. It's a master How data, would... right? It's a master data. So it, when you say pack spec, it's a master data. So okay. if I create a master data, what I'm going to tell my master data? Mm-hmm. That store ABC 555, that's not fixed. Or 
10, 10, 12, that's not fixed. So what, 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 what are we going to achieve out of that master data? So how will we overcome this? But you, in it's your... more about, uh, see, uh, Ron, it's not, it's more about, see, what we are trying to do here. We are trying to make a life easy for the operator, right? See, so you can only make it easy. You can only make it easy by proposing him the packaging material. Absolutely. The quantities are not at all fixed. Quantities will okay. vary based on the order. But but the total size of the pallet is fixed, right? That now, if I got a uh, Euro pallet, okay, Euro pallet for certain product, like I can put hundred units in that. Okay, Correct. that is a maximum. So you, right? you will create, let's say, you know, your volume or weight, whatever it is, that is fixed. Yeah. So if it is a that big is order, take, give me ten yeah. pallets. It will create ten yeah. pallets. But which one goes into which one? That you cannot do. So pack role of packing specs here can only be to propose you packaging materials. Okay, that's it. also the also the instruction, right? Right. What uh, uh, when you instruction like if you need a special instruction like to put a bubble wrap, what you want to do? That yeah, is yeah, also yeah. The, that, that is also possible. But uh, if you're doing it at a work center, yes, that will help. You're you're going to open the specs and you're going to read and do it. If if you if you want to do it on the fly, you know, you want to do it on RF, you cannot see the instructions mm -hmm. on RF. If you, you for ice cream, I would not suggest them to go to a work center, open the instruction, do one by one. I would rather tell them, you know, they are doing the job daily. On the picking itself, we should try and automate packing so that they don't need to take it to a work center. Yes, there will be some operations like where we need a work center. For example, uh, the very common is in case of automobile cars. You know, they, they need kits. The customer will uh, order, you know, brake assembly. You pick several items, brake assemblies of different, different small, small items. You pick them, bring them separately into a packing area. Now you pack them, prepare a handling unit, print a handling unit, then you go. But, you know, you create several handling units and then you, 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 it, it's basically, you know, four or five steps of packing and then you, uh, put it into the car and then you send it an additional brake assembly along with the other items. So packing basically, you know, when you're packing in outbound, we, we generally try to pack as much as possible during picking. And in the packing, we generally try to pack as per customer specific or we are grouping multiple deliveries together or uh, based on the routes or there's a customer specific labeling requirement or, you know, the customers have their own packaging materials which we would like to use and do the packing. Okay. So we, we'll come to several examples. We haven't, we are just picking full palette. This is our first palette. Now we have picked a full palette. You see several examples where you can do the packing on the fly when you're picking itself. And you can also do a packing, like I said, about a brake assembly or a car assembly or, you know, a, 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 a crankshaft kind of a assembly you're doing that in the packing area so we'll see those examples as well as we go ahead so packing can be in staging area in a separate packing area or it can be on picking but uh, the role of pack spec is limited you know it will not be it will not automate it will only propose you the packaging material there are functionalities where you know it will propose the right number of packaging material but again it will not give you the benefits that you see in inbound, like automating. I take everything to pack. I took everything to staging area. It got auto packed and got printed. We will not, we cannot have that kind of, uh, you know, because the quantity correlation will change all the time. Okay. All right. Just let's, let's quickly complete this delivery now. And yeah, there are many more sessions for packing. We'll again, you know, brainstorm through these uh, things. Let me see my delivery now. It has been goods issued. Oh, sorry, it has been picked now. I'm going to do a goods issue here. Oops, why this error? It is good to have error. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not for so you. It's, yeah. it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Is she gone? She's been very quiet. Is he looking into sorting? <laughs> Started to sorting. Over. So now goods issue is completed. Okay. Now. So what was it? What was it? Uh, 
I don't know. It went away. You know, I came went back. Went away. Yeah, yeah. You don't do one. Yeah. So let us see. You know, the goods issues posted or not in the ERP side. So this stock would have been removed now. Goods issues shown gone. Let's look at the delivery, the virtual document posting. Goods movement has been posted. Yes. Okay. And if you see tab six oh, what is the moment of six oh one? Six oh one. That is standard moment type for our bundle delivery standard against customer. Goods. Okay. And as a standard, uh, mm -hmm. Johan, what are the mm -hmm. documents which are printed? Because delivery will print a lot of documentation. Yeah. Uh, you got a picking, picking, Big you slip. got labels, yeah, you got slips and delivery mm -hmm. note. So what are come with the standard? I know you can develop whatever you want to, mm -hmm. but there must be some standards, right? So in standard, you know, there are outputs. Uh, ideally, you know, uh, in an outbound process, we have, um, so when we create a delivery, it goes to EW, we create a transfer or a warehouse order. Ideally, we can print a, you know, if you if you need a pick list, you can mm -hmm. print a pick list. There will be print at a, TO, uh, at a warehouse order level. Mm -hmm. uh, there, and once you do the goods issue, you have two options. One, you know, you can print bill of lading or packing slip mm -hmm. in the EWM side uh, through outbound delivery. Or, you know, we generally print it from here. What good determination. Yeah. yeah. From here, type, yeah. delivery output header. So, ideally, we would do it from ERP, but yeah, you can also do it from EWM. So, so this will be remain same. So, this is same as in an uh, ECC. So, we have the output type in this, which would print yeah. the delivery note, which I will have the handling unit number detail. So, mm -hmm. and from the EWM. So here, there is a no rule of the PPF, right, uh, Rowan? Yeah. yeah, yeah. PPF is only EWM specific. Only in EWM. So in EWM, so so as you said, so we can print the pick list. So pick list get printed at the time of uh, order creation. Delivery at the time of order creation. Eight zero. Order order is, the warehouse order, order, order is created. when the okay. pick order is created. Okay. See, there will be another output. There will be another output for your handling units. So you you pick the handling unit. So I think, you know, mostly we pick the products onto the pallet while we are picking itself. So you, as soon as you create a pallet, empty pallet or a, a customer specific pallet, we need to print it. See, most of the time we take empty pallets, we go and pick onto that pallet and we then stage it and then we goods issue it. So this pallet, which is created empty pallet, we need to label it. Okay. The customer name would be there, you know, the address would be there, or, you know, we may pick onto a local pallet, you know, I would in my picking area, we just put it into a, you know, uh, blue plastic pallet and then take it into packing area. Then the person in the packing area, he's going to create a customer pallet. So there also you can create another handling unit and uh, print it. So handling unit printing is another output, very important output in the, in the outbound side. So Okay, so here we saw one basic outbound. We can, we can you show? To, mm -hmm. Can you also show the uh, bin level? You know, the in the monitor, twenty three x. It is yeah. gone to twenty two x. Why is not twenty two now? Oh, it was twenty four initially. It was twenty no, four. Was it twenty four? I thought there was twenty three. No, no. no we received fifty pallets, isn't it? Twenty four, twenty four, two. We see 50 yeah. pallets day before yesterday. Now we just removed one out of it. Oh, okay. 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 So um, we'll, we'll stop here today. Tomorrow, let's let's look into the strategies, outbound strategies. There are several outbound strategies. We'll go through them and uh, we'll understand stock removal rule. I think we'll not be able to cover wave tomorrow. So let's only focus on the strategies. So when you uh, say strategy, it is a FIFO one, which we have uh, assigned 
right that mm. is what we Sorry. are talking that about that is one of the strategy we have several yeah, other yeah. strategies yeah, other, sleds fili yeah. for almost all the strategies are configured through the stock removal rule okay so we understand what is stock removal rule first Mm -hmm. and you know depending on the time we will we'll, if we have some more time we'll, we'll give in we'll cover an overview of wave as well tomorrow yeah. so so uh, ron for uh, sled uh, don't we need a batch number or we'll do it without batch we'll do we'll do it without batch, without batch. or we can also use batch as well yeah we'll see you know depending on time if if time permits if we we cover this tomorrow we'll we'll try to uh, discuss uh, a batch managed scenario as well Okay. Thank yeah, you, Ron. Here's a so here's an one question you. here. Actually, see when we see high level uh, difference between uh, inbound delivery and outbound delivery uh, replication from ERP to EWM. Mm -hmm. See, only thing is uh, all are same. Uh, that uh, inbound delivery when we create inbound delivery or outbound delivery, the same replicate to EWM, and uh, various task. Uh, uh creation and next uh, virus order and uh, mm -hmm. next is uh, uh goods uh, issue uh, that goods issue and goods uh, receipt the process a little uh, minor things Same. other than that difference right yeah, there are some more difference uh you know i'll, I'll explain you you know tomorrow when we start covering in more detail yeah okay okay okay, okay. Uh, i have to join another meeting sorry guys uh, we'll yeah. take up the questions tomorrow Go on. Yeah. okay fine thank you Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to visit our Vimeo page and follow for more upcoming videos.